Hello students, myself Vijayalakshmi Sadlapur, senior grade lecturer, Government Polytechnic Vijayapura, Department of Collegiate and Technical Education. I welcome you for a session on one of the graded exercises related to your C programming lab of first semester. The program which we are going through in this session is the multiplication of two matrices using the array subscript method. This is the table of contents which we are going through in this session. First, we shall go through the algorithm and flowchart of the program and we shall write the program for the multiplication of the two matrices. Later, we'll execute the program using your turbo C and we shall have some of the MCQs for the structures we have used in your program. The algorithm can be written after understanding this concept of how we go for the multiplication. So the multiplication considers the rows and the columns of the matrices. So here the condition is the number of rows of matrix 1 should be equal to the number of columns of matrix 2 and the number of rows and columns should be more than 0 for both the matrices. So as you know about the multiplication of the two matrices we have gone through in your mathematics. So here we will be going through what? Uh, we are going to consider the first row and the first column. Again, we will go for the first row and the second column and first row and the third column. So, we will get the first three elements of the first row. So, this is your first element. Okay. Then the second or as we are going to have the indices with 0, I will take it as what? 0th element. Then this is your first element and this is your second element. How we are going to consider the subscripts is what? This is 0, 0, that is 0 row and 0 column, 0 row and, and it will be what? The first column and this is again the 0 row and the second column. Okay. The same way if I want to write for the uh, next one, this will be what? This will be your first row and 0. So, it is, this will be 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 2. Okay. Here it will be 2, 0, 2, 1 and 2, 2. Okay. So, this is the subscripts how we are going to apply. Hmm. So, once we have the idea of the subscript, so this will be what? 0 with 0, 0 and 1 and 0 and 2. Okay. 0, 2 with what? Here this is your uh, 3, 0. So, this is the way how we are going to have the multiplication. First row with first column, first row with second column of matrix 2, first row of matrix 0 with the, the third column of the matrix 2. So, this is how we are going to get the elements row wise. Okay. So, once we perform this operation, these can be your out, these will be your outputs. So, uh, after execution of the program, you, you also can go through your uh, C programming, any of the assembler which you are going to use. I have used here Turbo C and you, you can just run the program by taking your own inputs and just cross check the result. Okay. So, after understanding about how we go for, we will go through the algorithm of the program. So, as you know, algorithm is nothing but it is a step by step procedure to write a program and it is going to help the program about how the code uh, is written and how the operation in the code goes through. Okay. So, the algorithm will be respective of any of the languages you are going to use. So, you write the program in any of the language, the algorithm, you can use the same algorithm for any uh, coding system. Okay. So, here is the algorithm what we have. So, we will start. Okay. Then we are going to declare the variables. So, what variables we are going to declare here? So, you have two matrices, isn't it? So, for these matrices, we need the rows and columns. So, for matrix 1, I may declare it as M and N. For matrix 2, I can declare it as a P and Q. And as it is a two-dimensional uh, matrices we are going for, so we need two uh, variables to access the elements of each matrix. So I can declare the variables which we need to access the elements of each matrix. Okay, and uh, uh, to show your result, we may need one more variable. So all these variables will be declared here in the uh, second step. The next we are going to enter the elements of the matrix row-wise. Okay, we are going to enter it uh, row wise. So, uh, 
when we, whenever you want to enter the two dimensional arrays okay your matrix is a two dimensional array so whenever you want to enter it we need to use the loops okay loop in loop inside the loop will be taken and we will see that in the program the next uh, we are going to then check how many number of rows and columns are there okay for both the matrices then we are going to check the condition that if the number of rows and the columns should be what same and they should be greater than zero so if this condition is true then you go for the multiplication okay then we go for the multiplication else we are again asking to re-enter all the elements and the other uh, uh, sorry we are asking to enter all the elements and also the orders of the matrices okay then after multiplication we need to print the resultant Mat uh, matrix that is a product of the matrix will be displayed okay so this is the algorithm for this algorithm we'll go to the uh, flowchart so flowchart is a graphical representation for your algorithm where we again go for the stepwise approach to solve the given problem or the task okay so usually the students uh, feel it more easier to understand the program if they first go through the flowcharts because it's a pictorial representation okay so here whenever we want to write the flowchart as you know we will be using the steps okay as the uh, we will be going the uh, going through the steps through your boxes of various kinds and also we are going to have the connectors to each of the boxes okay. so here is the flowchart for our given program okay so here we are going to declare the uh, start the program then we read the variables okay so here for this i have taken m and n for matrix 1 that is number of rows for matrix 1 is equal to m number of columns for the matrix 1 is equal to matrix 1 is equal to n the same way p and q for the number of rows and columns of matrix 2 respectively i j and k these are the variables we require for our uh, displaying your result or taking the inputs okay. then what are the conditions we are checking as already said the number of rows and of matrix 1 and the uh, columns of matrix 2 should be matched and we have to see that they are all greater than a 0 if it is false again we will ask to re-enter the elements if it is true then we start reading the elements of these two mat input matrices see in this flowchart i have not considered the uh, uh, for loops which we require to read the elements of the two uh, dimensional matrix here okay and also i have not considered the uh, blocks to uh, display your result in the console because here again we may require two uh, for loops here and two for loops here that will increase the complexity of the flowchart so i have just skipped that i have directly written that we need to read the elements of the matrix a and matrix b and here i have just written directly as write the matrix c okay the next once we uh, check all the conditions everything is over we have taken the inputs now we start with the multiplication process so first we will start with what first row should be kept as a zero uh, that is first row huh? so we are taking as our index start from what zero the indexing in your array system it will start from zero so that's why i have taken it as a zero and the last we will subscript will be what it is one lesser so it will be m minus one so for i is equal to zero to m minus one we are going to perform okay so as i already shown here so for i is equal to zero Okay, we start with i is equal to 0. So, for three loops, it has to go through the same 0, 0 and 0. i is equal to 0. We need to keep on changing the values of a j. j is the column, isn't it? So, j is equal to 0, j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2. Okay. So, once this is over, okay, once the j completes, then next we, uh, here when j is going to complete, what we will do? We will come out of that inner loop. And again we are going to increment your i so here now i will become equal to 1 so again for i is equal to 1 again we need to keep on increasing your value of j okay then once again j reaches the last value of 2 again it comes out and goes for the ith loop where we get i is equal to 2 okay i hope you are getting so for i is equal to 2 again keep on increasing the values of j for each column respectively okay that will be done so we need what to loop inside the loop so first we keep i is equal to 0 keep on incrementing the j for all the three columns next i is equal to 1 keep on incrementing the values of j up to 2 again i is equal to 2 keep on incrementing the values of up to 
j is equal to 2. So once i is equal to 2, that is m minus 1 is equal to 0, okay, that is m minus 1 is equal to 2, then what we do is we come out of this loop. So that will indicate that we have taken all the elements and we have performed the operation, okay. The same thing we have written here. For i is equal to 0, if it is true, you perform uh, the incrementation of your j and you are going to first assign the, take the sum is equal to 0 and to take the, uh, to save our values, okay. So what we are doing is we, we are here uh, initially declaring it as a 0 and then later we keep on assigning the resultant to c of uh, ij. This continues up to what uh, uh, all these variables will reach their max. Hmm? So when i value comes out, Okay, when it comes out to be equal to m minus 1, then this condition will also go false and you come out and you directly print your uh, what the resultant matrix C. Okay, so this is how we are going to perform the multiplication. So here we have we have A, uh, A into B plus whatever was the resultant previous sum. So that is been uh, getting uh, added up here. So this is the same program. So here I have written, splitted the program in four stages. So in the first stage, using the do while loop, okay, using the do while loop, I have checked for the conditions of the number of rows and uh, your columns after taking the order of matrix A and the order of uh, matrix B, okay. So we have used the do while loop here. Then next, we have taken the inputs. We have taken the inputs for the matrix A and the matrix B. Okay, so in order to take the inputs, we require a loop inside the loop. So that is for i is i and this is the inner loop for j is equal to 0 we have initialized. Same way for matrix B also. Once we take the input, then we perform the multiplication. So we here perform the multiplication as already explained in the algorithm. Then we display the result by using the matrix C. Okay, so this is all about how we are going to write the program and we have displayed it using your again the loop inside the loop itself and this is your resultant matrix which we have which will be displayed here. Now if you just take the example I have taken one example as the order of matrix as 2 and 3 and the order of matrix of B is equal to 3 and 2 here the condition is being checked okay the condition is being checked here 3 3 so we are going to enter the elements of the matrix so how it will perform so first row and first column first row and second column okay that will be our first product hmm? the same way we are going to perform for all the uh, four elements zeroth element first element second element and this will be our third element for all the elements we perform it okay so the one which we have taken during the explanation that is i have taken a 3 by 3 matrix okay 3 by 3 matrix and we have taken the elements as 1 2 and 3 and this would be your result okay so students what you can do is when you are going to execute the program <laughs> you can just take the same example or uh, and cross check it uh, by doing manual uh, multiplication and also do your program okay whatever inputs you are going to execute just cross check by doing it manually also okay now we'll just see the execution of the program by using the turbo c So now I have opened uh, the Turbo C. So the steps to write and execute the program in your Turbo C is what? First you write the program, then you go for, you, then you go for the file, okay? And you can save the program or directly also you can use the shortcut key F2 to save the program. Once you save the program, you need to compile the program. So just go for compiling. You can use the shortcut key as Alt F9. So once you compile, it shows whether the any errors or warnings are there. If it is, just do the correction. Now here, no error is displayed. So we will continue to run the program. So for running the program, you can use the uh, shortcut key as control F9. So here, when I start running the program, it asks to enter the order of matrix A. Just give the simple order of the matrix. Uh, let me give it as see let me just take a very simple example if i take one by one so one by one is nothing but how many elements you'll be having just only one element isn't it so for uh, order of matrix b also let me take the same input one by one i'll just give the in simple input as what two 
So because it is one by one matrix, so how many elements will have? Only one element. So I'll just view it view. Or also let me give it as two. What is the product here? <coughs> the product would be two into two, which is equal to four. Okay. So just uh, this when you whenever you want to check a very bigger programs, it is better to go for simple input so that uh, on a strict you can just easily uh, find out whether your program is working correctly or not then later you keep on increasing the values and execute the program and check your result so the same thing i'm doing here I'm just giving one single uh, one uh, input okay two into two is four so as there is product is coming out to be correct so my program is also correct here so what you can do is you can just go through your own inputs okay and uh, execute the program so once we execute the program, so now after the execution of the program, now let us just go uh, for some uh, interesting uh, questions, okay, some MCQs we will go through. So first is, what is the work of the break keyword? To halt, okay, whether it is to, whether it is to halt the program or restart the execution or to exit from the loop or switch statement or none of the above what will be the answer just think over yes the result is what your break where you are using the break you are using the break in your switch statement so answer is c next c is a low level language or high level assembly level or machine level language yes it is a high level language okay the next what is an array in C language? So we have used the arrays in this program. So I have uh, kept some questions based on your arrays. Array is a group of elements of the same data type. Is it correct? Yes. Next, an array contains more than one element. Yes, it is having more than one element. The next one or more than one elements will be there. Then array elements are stored in memory in continuous or contiguous locations. Yes, one after the another. You are going to store the arrays in a continuous uh, memory locations. All of the above. So what we have observed is after going through all the three statements, we we are uh, knowing that all the three statements are correct. So your option will be D. Okay. Next, a correct statement about C language arrays. Okay. We'll just have to find out which is the correct statement. An array address is the address of first element of the array itself. An array size must be declared if not initialized. See, the, what is the first statement here? An array address is the address of the first element. Yes, the first element itself is the starting address of the array. So, this is also true. What is the second one? The array size must be declared if not initialized immediately. So, as I said, either you have to initialize it or you have to declare the size. Yes, so, so the second is also correct. The array size is the sum of the sizes of all the elements of the array. So, all the statements are true. So, here the answer is D itself. So, what are the types of arrays? The types of arrays you can declare the data type to be in the form of int, long, float, double, struct, enum, and it also can be of the character. So, all the types, data types can be used for the arrays. So, here is again all of the above is the right answer. An index, array index starts with what? Whether it starts with minus 1, 0, 1, or 2. Yes, it starts with the 0. So, your B is a correct. Choose a correct statement about the C language arrays. See, an array size cannot be changed once we have created. Once we have created or initialized it during the declaration, we cannot change the array size. Yes, this is correct. Next, array element value can be changed. The element value we are saying here, it can be changed any number of times. Yes. To access the nth element of an array, Okay, we have to array students. The name of the array is students here. We have to use for the nth element, we have to use n minus 1, isn't it? Because the index is starting from 0. So, this, this statement is also correct. So, here all the statements are correct. The next, what is the output of the C program here given? Okay. So, here, <coughs> see, we have declared an A which is an array, okay, and we have uh, not initialized with the size we have uh, given the values of this array okay 
and we are asking to print the zeroth element of the array. Right? So what is the zeroth element here? Zeroth element is one, isn't it? So what can be the option? Whether it is one, two, four, or a compiler error? Yes, here it cannot be one. Instead, it will show it as a compiler error because we have neither initialized the array in the same statement nor we have declared the size of this array here. Okay. So if this 4 would have been written here, then the answer would be 1. But we have not declared the size, neither we have declared or initialized this array here itself. So that's why this will show it as a what? As a compiler error. See, for loop in a C program, we have used the loops also. We will just see one or two questions based on this. If the condition is missing, what happens? If the condition is missing, so you know in the loop, we need to, uh, we go for some conditions, okay. So, if the condition is not there, then what the compiler does? It is assumed to be present and taken it to be false. It is assumed to be present and taken it to be true. Is the, uh, it is the result is in a syntax error, the execution will be terminated abruptly. So, which is the right uh, thing here. See, in, the, uh, in any of the loops, if the condition is missing, then always the compiler will assume that it is true, uh, that is it is present and it will be taken as a, a true condition, okay. So here your answer will be B. See the last one, which of the following statements about for loop is true? The index value is retained outside the loop, yes we can declare it outside. The index value can be changed from within the loop, can we change it inside the loop. Then go to can be used to jump out of the loop. So we can use the go to statement if you want to come out of the loop, any of the loops. Okay. So here we feel that all the statements are true. So here the answer is B again. Okay. So students, these are some of the MCQs related to uh, your C programming. The references I have used for this is uh, I've gone through your Balaguru Swami and Ashwan Kanekar. And students, this is a team we are working at the state level content development of your. C programming lab. Thank you.